I'm not going to throw you out cold and say, okay, now write an email, <laughs> right? But I'm going to show you a really good one um, that uh, I came across. And so this is not mine, this, but this was in public domain. I'm not violating any copyright laws. Nobody's going to get mad at me for this. Okay, so here is a really good sample email. Okay, so it starts off, hi, Ted, very simple. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, this is an American, so we're always up, up, up and very, very happy. But you could say something like, I hope this finds you well, you know, or I hope you're enjoying the summer weather, something like that, but very short and simple, and you don't have to put it in. It's, it's totally up to you. My name is Nate, okay, identifying yourself, and I'm a co-founder at XS. Cute little play on words, excess, that means any more, and it's similar to success. But I'm a co-founder at Excess, so he's identified his name and his title and his company in one sentence. Next one, why are you writing? I'm reaching out, meaning I'm writing to you today. I'm reaching out because you backed Miso Media, which I love, and I wanted to get your advice about our new company since we have just opened our seed round. Okay, so this is interesting. So he's, he's showing that he's aware of this VC company's activities. You backed Miso Media. Oh, that's cool. I really like that. So you want to make some kind of connection, even if it's just like I read about you, or I was thrilled that you did this, or this is really cool, or my sister knew your brother from high school. Whatever. And I wanted to get your advice about our new company since we have just opened our seed run. This is a very indirect kind of way of saying it, right? Um, really, the purpose of this email is to initiate a, a conversation with this person. He says, to thank you for your time. All right, meaning I respect you, I acknowledge you, I want to make give this, you know, make it worth your while to deal with me. If you're interested in surfing and you find yourself back in the San Francisco Bay Area, I'd love to give you a lesson. Or more traditionally, buy you a cup of coffee or take you to lunch or whatever. Now, again, you don't have to do this. It may not be practical given, you know, time and space and distance, but one one thing that I heard of was someone said, if you will, if you will, um, if you will let me talk to you for a half an hour, I will make a donation to a charity of your choice of $500. Okay. Now, again, you may not want to do that or, or can't do that, uh, but the idea is that you're not you're not trying to bribe somebody. You're just trying to offer them something uh, that they may enjoy, like a surfing lesson or a simple cup of coffee or a donation to a, a charity, not to them directly. It's not a bribe. It's you know to something else, but something something nice, a nice gesture. Then he says, "I know your time is really valuable." Again, you're complimenting them. You're respecting them. So in the spirit of the 30-second pitch, right, and uh, if you end up signing up for a business English class, you'll learn more about what this elevator pitch or 30-second pitch is. But basically, it's a 30-second speech that, you know, presents the company and, you know, presents the idea and tries to, you know, get, get things moving. So now here he goes. Right? So you see what he's done in this one paragraph. I mean, really, it's, it's really quite magnificent. Then in the second little one, he just introduces, okay, I'm going to tell you about your company. And then he says, blah, blah, blah. I mean, he's saying, XS is creating a mobile community for action sports enthusiasts. Our app is a place, okay, so it's an app, it's a mobile community, 
its target, you know, sector is action sports. Think hang gliding, surfing, uh, I don't know, BMX, motocross, uh, ATVs, that kind of thing. Um, okay. Um, our app is a place where people can view and share high quality user generated blah 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 and blah blah blah. And then at the end he says think Instagram slash Pinterest meets fab for sports. Okay, I don't understand all of that because I'm not sure what a fab is. I know Instagram and Pinterest. But okay, so what he's saying is let me put this in a context that you understand for what's already out there. This is very important when pitching your idea for venture capital, is that it must be relatable in some way to the reader, right, in something that's, that's understandable. Okay, and here he goes, he says, here's my pitch deck, and he just gives a link, and then he gives a three minute video pitch. I've watched this, this is extraordinary, it's just a great, great thing if, believe me, you know, a picture says a thousand words, and if you can come up with a pitch video that's well done and snappy and fun as well as a pitch deck, wow, you really, and you've really introduced yourself as well, so you see this guy. Um, and you'll, you'll get this, as, you know, at the, at the end of the lesson. Okay, I hear somebody typing, I just wanted to leave, da 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 Yes, uh, can you help us uh, have the documents of your uh, presentation? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we will get those. We will get those to you um, and the recording of the presentation. Um, I'm not sure when, but within <laughs> within a short time. I mean, certainly you know within within a couple of days. My tech people aren't here right now because it's so. Uh, early in the morning, three in the morning or something. Um, but yeah, you will definitely, definitely get these. Okay, so there's that. Now, we're right at the halfway point, and this is where I would like all of you to take about, I would say about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna put this on a whiteboard. All right, so everybody, please, Take uh, five to ten minutes to write a short email like the sample I just showed you um, to fit your pretend or real company and product service idea. When you're ready, uh, put uh, say so in the chat box and uh, if you want, uh, you can share your screen and we can have a look. Okay. So I'm putting this, I put this down in writing uh, just so the people who can't hear me um, know what to do and know what we're doing. But I will go back to um, the sample so you can use it as a reference. So hold on for a second. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of chill out. We got uh, about five or 10 minutes. I'm gonna put the chat box on so I can see what's going on. Okay. While you're, while you're finishing up, I'll just, for, for those of you who have already finished and have a minute to listen, when I started this class this evening, I said that I've been teaching for 27 years, and during that time, I've seen a lot change. When I began, people could read and write very well but they couldn't speak well at all because they had very little opportunity to practice and they heard very little English. I mean, maybe they would see some movies, but mainly in the countries where I worked, um, and I've worked in six of them, uh, they, most of the, the foreign Hollywood movies and so on were dubbed into their own language. So there was a lot of difficulty with speaking, but people could write very well. 
Then it kind of changed, and people got very good at speaking because the schools changed, and they said, no, no, we want to be able, we want students to be able to communicate with foreign visitors and travel abroad and, and converse. And everybody got very good at speaking, and the whole writing skills were, you know, kind of downplayed. They were like, well, as long as they can read, that's fine. But really, how much are they going to have to write? Not many uh, uh, people will, will, you know, let you know uh, what this is about. So then it came in, then, it, then, then, and that was all pre-internet. Then it became the internet and Facebook and text messages and e-commerce and online shopping and all of a sudden now the demand for written English has gone way up. How do I write? How do I respond? How do I troubleshoot? How do I apologize? How do I solve problems? Everybody needs this very functional English for business context because everything is turning into emails. And so writing has come back in fashion and people are like, look, I hear all the Hollywood I need, but I mean, it's, I don't have problems understanding English, but I really don't need to speak that much anymore because nobody calls. It's cheaper and faster and more accurate to email. So here we go again. So now <laughs> we're, we're in this. So in, in some ways, the, the kind of skills demand has changed. Um, but and and of course with technology the vocabulary changes. I mean seriously, pitch deck. What the heck? I asked my husband today. I said, "Do you do you know what a pitch deck is?" He said, "No, I've never heard that." I'm like, "Well, did you know it's actually a you know it's blah, blah, blah. and I and I told him and he's like, "Oh, that's interesting." Now he's been in business for 40 years, right? So the language is always changing, especially around startups. It's very trendy, it's very sexy, it's very you know cool, and it, it's hard to keep up. You, you really have to, to make an effort. But at the same time, the, the same principles are still there. Respect for the recipient, clarity, organization, um, you know, give the person instructions. It's it's really clear. So this is just a, a very clear structure, and uh, I think I think it will serve you well. And also, you can apply it to um, to. Uh... <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just uh, I I don't know if you can see this. Um, there's a oh golly. I don't... Sorry, I'm I'm looking at this this uh, chat uh, box, and one of these students, he's not here anymore. He had to actually depart uh, from the class. Uh, the person wanted to um, to share a particular link. I will it, it will be in the chat menu. I will see if we can get it to you. Um, I, I hope so. I, I'm not sure how dissemination of chat stuff goes when we're dealing with quotes. Um, usually I work with the single students. Okay, so uh, we have one student who says, Hi, I would like you I would I would I would let you know or I would like to let you know how uh, about my interesting project. Uh, he said how interesting is my project. My project is Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> These are some topics that will make the difference. Blah, 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 blah. If you trust in me, you will be able to increase the capital in blah, blah, blah. <laughs> These are some beautiful pie charts, etc. <laughs> you can enjoy the presentation of my project here, blah, 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 dot com. Thanks in advance for your time. Best regards. Okay, very, yeah, very good. Um, so for the student who uh, gave that to me, he sent it to me privately, so I won't uh, reveal his name. Uh, it looks pretty good. There, there is some, a little bit of trouble with word order, um, and I'm looking at your last name, and I'm, I'm taking a wild guess uh, that where you're from uh, matches your name, and that's uh, some common interference that happens with uh, your language, what I think is your language, and, and English. So do watch out for word order. You know, when you think about word order, you also have to think about grammar. Um, if you're using the present simple, if you're using the present continuous, um, 
generally, when you're doing pitch letters like this, pitch emails really, um, you're most likely going to be dealing with the present simple. My name is Bob. I work for blah. My job is blah. My project is da. I mean, you're, you're really is, 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 present simple. And then a little bit about the future. I'm sure you will find that our uh, prospects are fantastic. Uh, I, I will call you next week to set up an appointment. I will blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's kind of present simple, present simple, present simple, and then usually a little bit at the future. That's usually what, what a, a, a pitch email like that is, um, is for. Okay. Does anyone else want to show uh, the class what they wrote? We, we can, I can uh, make you the presenter and you can share your screen and uh, we can have a look at it.